Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Wishing you a happy Monday morning. You made it a little way to Monday, so it's the beginning of the week. So welcome to the new week. I am your host here, and I would like to wish you a happy Monday morning. Hope you're having the best Monday morning possible out there in cryptocurrency land. Let's get into live scene. As Bitcoin's actually had quite some movement over the weekend, so we do have quite a few things to talk about. And overall, over here on the daily, as always, starting with the higher time frames, Bitcoin basically just rejecting the 21 exponential and ending the day below, sorry, yesterday, Sunday, below the 10 simple moving average. And again, this is why I use moving averages. As you can see, these guys are still gaining divergence even when 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 everyone was was getting really excited about this uh, green dildo right over here which was done again on very low volume um you know talking about oh my god my target is now three thirty nine hundred four thousand no fuck that five thousand well of course these help get he, these help remove the noise and as you see again they are gaining momentum away from each other they are diverging in in the literal sense of it saying that the say, saying that the trend is resuming essentially to the downside which is what we got resolution on yesterday sunday and today again martin luther king jr uh holiday i have a dream that bitcoin well not looking too healthy right now, but I do have a dream long term for Bitcoin. Anyways, uh, overall, the story has not changed. Very corrective price action. You see this nice orderly drop off in volume. And uh, and even with yesterday's red dildo party, even that, you know, not really not really doing anything crazy over here. It's not like we're having a resolution of this pattern, more importantly. But what happens when you just have a corrective move over a after an overall downtrend? Well, typically leads to more of the same. But for now, ranging. So as always, trying to keep things level headed, trying to think, trying to keep things as focused as possible. Possible. But I do want to get over here to the longs and shorts uh, before I forget. And this is this is unprecedented as far as I'm concerned. The longs funding rate on Finex right now is not 0.147 percent. Now that's more than double than what we looked at yesterday. And I don't and I really can't recall a time in the past when it's actually been this high. Why is it significant? Well, if you're holding a million dollar position on Finex right now, long to the long side, only to the long side, as you can see over here on the shorts, they are paying nothing. Um, you're going to be paying you know five to ten thousand dollars a day, uh, I believe, just to hold that position. And right now, you know, when the trend is well, not necessarily. The most bullish of all time, you might consider that as a cost that you don't want to uh, want don't don't want to incur. Not only that, uh, but we do have about thirty two, a little over thirty two thousand open longs versus twenty three thousand open shorts. Uh, twenty uh, with four and a quarter of those hedged, so we really have about a little under eight, nineteen thousand uh, 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 open naked shorts versus thirty two you know thousand open longs. So there is an imbalance there. And again, this is not the setup that you want to have. This is one of the, I mean, this isn't the biggest reason. Why, this is nowhere near the biggest reason why I do not believe that Bitcoin adds a low end or anything like that. But it is certainly a relevant reason um, nonetheless and when Bitcoin actually does put in a major low a major market shifting low I want to see those stats basically opposite I want to see shorts above 30,000 and then longs you know you know basically you know 75% of that um, or 69% of that that would be better uh, again doesn't need to be exactly like that but those are relevant it, it reflects the overall malaise of the market if I'm even using that word properly anyways uh, over here on the daily there's not too I mean just just looking at price action this <laughs> pretty much tells the story itself uh, looking at our looking at our momentum oscillators our mom oscillators get me those chicken tendies bitch because Stokes just crossed down once again and also we do have the DMI ADX signaling a potential trend beginning no full-on signal just yet even with the more aggressive settings i would still say that nope you don't have it dmi minus a little bit more on the dominant side but i would not consider that uh, I, I would not consider I would, I would not consider that bullish nor bearish which is exactly what it should be saying right that's exactly what it should be saying why because we are just consulting or sorry not we but not you and i but <laughs> we're consulting on this talk i hope that you're enjoying it but bitcoin is consolidating in, as far as price action goes um and, uh, and essentially, as long as we're below that 10 simple moon average right over here, around, uh, just under 3,600, I am bearish. Um and, uh, and, and looking for this to kind of, you know, have some more downside, so to speak. Uh, we'll talk about targets in a bit. Uh, what is the Daily Jewel saying? Daily Jewel is actually going to be running into some resistance pretty damn soon. So I would imagine if Bitcoin does get that test up to that 3600 level, which, by the way, will come into confluence with where CME's closed on Friday, last Friday, last, last Friday. <laughs> Oh my God, I am such a moron. Uh, but but right over here, CME's closed Friday at 3,600 even. Um, you know, we do have a nice gap right over there. So 
if if Bitcoin were to pop back up and test that area, that would probably be a massive sell for me anywhere around that area. Uh, this gap has not been filled or anything like that. We did put in a symmetrical triangle, um, uh, I guess better best seen on an hourly right over here. That was resolved to the downside. A nice, uh, sorry, opening up about $100 lower than the close on Friday. And uh, as long as it's respecting this 3520 ish areas resistance, you know, actually there's more pre pressure to the downside right now than than there is up. I know people people typically think that gaps need to be filled or there's there's for there's for whatever reason ever since I start, started talking about this people think that these things need to be filled like immediately when when things open back up no that's not the case at all to be very very clear that's not the case at all it can take it can take months it can take years in in the case of uh, of traditional assets uh it ha i've seen i've seen uh scenarios where it does take years typically though you know when things are not that far away it will you know it'll, it'll get it'll get filled faster sooner rather than later but it's just i've seen the, the same fucking question a million times now so not to be a dick or anything about that it's just want to make that very very clear anyways uh let's go back on over here to our uh our higher time frames on this fresh chart i'm gonna put i'm gonna pull up the two day again the two day the the, the 10 simple moving average just telling you exactly what's going on right here uh beautiful test to it on saturday uh, again very very low volume and then sells right off so uh, so you know that is the big advantage of using these things and keeping an eye on the higher time frames and it, you know people are just get people just get excited by the littlest fucking moves of all time we spoke about where this was actually likely to go to and i believe it got hit one to one we spoke we we we, we did that yesterday i won't waste on, waste time on it today but looking at the two day right over here we, we got our two day um our two day stoke still headed down we did just get a new tick on this last night uh it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to keep up this sort of momentum just because they are you know quite diverged from each other although you do see that they're starting to lose a little bit um but overall, you know, it's just just another thing kind of pointing down, right? Uh, two day RSI trending below the exponential. Once again, again, this is, you know, we uh, once we saw that this kind of was rejected right over here, likely to kind of have some more down, so to speak. And two day jewel, two day jewel actually just crossed the downside. Um, that's bad. That's bad. Uh, when <laughs> that's <laughs> jewel man, bad. Um, when things do start trending to the downside or to the upside, you'll see it where it kind of just pops back, kisses kisses the slow, and then and then continues onwards. Um, trying to find a good good example. Uh, actually, not well. Yeah, you, you do have it right around here. Um, so yeah, that's that's going to be the next kind of thing that I'm looking for. You know, how does it react if and when it does test that area once again? I don't think that it happens for a little bit of time, as you know, it's it's got it's got to build up the case. But so far, um, that is what I'd be looking at on the two day. Let's go check out the three day now. Three day uh, dildo time frame again, giving us a beautiful signal on the Stokes over here, rejecting the more not even rejecting the bullish zone, but but rejecting getting out of the neutral zone more importantly and crossing down. Now this is not a super momentous cross. To the downside it is a fresh one however and we will be getting another tick tonight at 7 p.m eastern time so assuming that bitcoin ends here or lower by that you know by by, by the three-day dildo close i uh, very very likely that this does have some more or sorry we will get resolution on if this is you know if, if this is still going to be heading that direction i'd be looking for like an actual momentous turn downwards i don't want to see it go sideways otherwise mm, it's not going to tell you too much but looking at the dildos right over here again 10 simple just giving you just telling you the picture even the 377 just governing all the highs going along this area 21 crossing the downside uh, below there not good what else do we have to look at dmi adx telling you absolutely nothing which is again exactly what it should be saying this consolidation which will bring me to my next point after that but we are crossing below the exponential on the rsi right over here as well so after putting in some hidden bearish divergence on these two twin peaks um uh, I, I'd be, you know, again, I, I am looking for that to actually pop a little bit lower. Uh, so, you know, when it comes down to it, looking at the the the, the three day and the two day, I get this very very nicely. I said, uh, when was this? I said like, well, I've been saying ever since we got this area right over here. As long as Bitcoin is closing these two day totals below this this kind of like local low right here at thirty six ninety, I don't really see any reason to be bullish or anything like that. In fact, I'd be looking to sell that area, and you know, that's essentially what we got over here. Um, but to really understand what we're looking at over here, there's a couple things to be aware of. Let me get, just get rid of this. Okay, great. All right. So overall, this symmetrical triangle right over here that we put in for what was it like two and a half weeks uh, that we were working on, um, getting all the way to you know 4,000-ish area, that is still very much in play. Remember, that is in play as long as Bitcoin is below 3850, the breakdown point, or you know I think that it was like right around here. Yeah, 30, yeah, about 3850. You know, it's not exactly 3850, but it's close enough. Close enough is close enough, man. Um, 
and that has a measure move coming all the way down to 3250 again does that mean that Bitcoin is definitely going to come down here? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that, but it does. But I, I will be rolling with that assumption as long as we are essentially below that 3850 level right over here. You can see that over the weekend, this was essentially just a test of the 200 exponential moving average. It was rejected and then full on downwards. Now, what are we working on right over here? Does this look like another consolidation? Actually, it does. It actually does look like another consolidation to me. In fact, Looking at the volume here, we, again, this very orderly drop off in volume, we have a nice horizontal support right over here at around 35, let's just call it 3,500 even. It's not necessarily exactly that. And then we have this guy rising right over here. So what are we really working on? Are we working on, you know, is this is this a bearish consolidation or a bullish consolidation? Well, we are going to have our lower time frame oscillators starting to, uh, our, our sorry, our lower time frame momentum oscillators like stochastics over here starting to signal some, uh, or, or they they will cross the upside pretty damn fast uh, or it's pretty damn soon technically speaking you do have bullish divergence over here between this point and this point although i am very hesitant to say that that's going to play out in fact i would not be leaning towards it my opinion but uh, it's it's worthwhile to talk about uh dmi adx actually telling me that the trend uh, is 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 actually beginning once again so dmi adx is is bearish right now for all intents and purposes uh jewel on the four hour typically does not it does not stay this low for too long to be fair um so there is like a time component of uh, of how long bitcoin can stay down here without breaking it before it just before before you're, you're going to get one of those uh, another try upwards now for the time being i am certainly bearish i am i would put certainly more uh points in the in in, in the case of the bears court again whenever we have you know a year over a year as long of a downtrend well I'm just going to go with the side that's been winning for, for over a year now because it's just more likely to continue until it doesn't. Until it doesn't. I know that that's not too helpful, but it's quite literally the truth. You know, it works until it doesn't. And it's been working for the last year, so all you've had to do is just follow that for the last year. It's that simple. Um, anyways, so looking at this guy right over here, yeah, you do have this horizontal right over here at 3,500. Do you have anything else to be aware of? I mean, you know, you could certainly do something like this. You could say that that was a rising channel bear flag that we were working on, or I guess a little bit more parallel, something like this. Um, that would have a measure move if we go all the way. Hmm, where would we start this one? I suppose I suppose the only area that would that really makes sense is right over here. Let's uh, let's apply that to the to the potential downside. Oh, man, these silly charts are good and so uh, so convoluted that actually be pointing all the way to the former low of about 30 31 50 ish area do i think that bitcoin's going there going there from here no i think i think 3250 if it even gets down there is going to be a an insane bitch to chew through um overall i think something like this is really what's going on you know some sort of a massive descending triangle uh just like we had at 6000 is 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 the more likely you know prognosis for this because everyone's going to be looking at this and when I, if if bitcoin actually does break 3500 you're going to see everyone get really fucking bearish again really fucking bearish again and what happens when everyone gets bearish they start posting charts of guys we are going to 1100 tomorrow it's like probably not probably not again i'm i i am bearish on bitcoin i do believe that bitcoin will i strongly believe that bitcoin will be hitting new lows or making new lows at some point in time but that's going to take a long time if bitcoin does get back into this range right over here we probably just bounce around and start filling this guy out and just really pissing everyone else off because People like people can't deal with consolidation for whatever reason. Um, I don't know why. It's it's just like people think that you either have to go full up to the moon or straight down to the floor. It typically doesn't work like that. I mean, how many major breakouts and breakdowns did you have in the last year? I mean, really, like one right here and then two right there. Uh, the rest is consolidation essentially. Some pretty big consolidations, but for all intents and purposes, yeah, it was consolidations. Um, so you didn't really have like too many great trending moves for and, and you know as far as the higher time frames go except for the one down i mean if you just consider that that whole thing if you just consider the whole thing um anyways moving on to the weekly right over here we do have a few things to go to be aware of on the weekly let's actually pull up um this chart and i'm gonna put on the 200 simple by the way the 200 simple represented now by the red line by the red moving average that'll be coming in around 3250 as well that's also why i you know i do believe that it breaks at some point in time but probably not anytime soon and if bitcoin were to get back down there i'd be looking for a bounce on, on at least on that pass on the second pass um for now though bitcoin did put in an inverted uh do you want to call this an inverted hammer right here a doji-ish type dildo whatever you want to call it it is on pretty damn light volume so i don't put too much weight on it which is the more important thing um 
But uh, but hey, that also means that if Bitcoin takes out the low of this deal to about 30, 34.70-ish area on uh, Stamp, then, then then yes, we we do once again have continuations. Um, not only that, but weekly Stokes are actually crossed up, so fair enough, that would be a more bullish thing. Weekly ADX DMI actually telling you that the trend is starting to pick back up again, but I don't really see the DMI minus giving you a full, I mean, it is above the signal line, to be fair, it is a dominant trend, no doubt about that. Uh, but I really want to see that ADX like start to you know bolt up, and we don't we don't have that just yet. Uh, weekly is still trending below the RSI over here, and uh, weekly jewel is, is it, it actually did cross above the signal line, so or sorry the the slow over here, which this one doesn't lie too often. To be fair, it does not lie too often. Um, so fair enough, you know, that, uh, that would be a more, uh, th that, uh, that would be a counterpoint to the more bearish, uh, sig uh to, to the more bearish scenario. Um, sometimes it does snake around in these more critical levels, no doubt about that, but, but overall it doesn't, it's, it very rarely lies. So by the way, a lot of people have been asked about the, about the jewel and all of my proprietary, uh, indicators. Those are available in the, in, in the link in the description. Um, but they are not, you know, I, I do have most of my stuff free. Most, I mean, I've literally over thousands of hours of content free as well as indicators that I pu publish myself, but those ones are not. Um, so if you're interested in it, definitely go check it out in the description of this video. Uh, not going to be applicable to most people though. Anyways, let's go down over to, let's go back to the four hour right over here and let's see what else we can see in this chart. Whoops. Let's go back to this one, our fresh one right over here. And looking at this guy right over here again, I don't really think that there's too much else to be said in the more immediate time frames, other than 3,500 for the downside. We break that area on a two hour dildo. Very, 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 very likely making our way down to at least 30, you know, 3,350, 3,400 ish area. Somewhere down around here is, is looking to me like the next kind of support ledge. Yeah. Between in this sort of, let's actually just throw a blue box down around there. Where's my blue box? There we go. There, get your blue waffles on. And there it is. Um, by the same token to the upside, sorry, th this is essentially all relevant to me as long as we are really respecting 3,600 as resistance. Uh, even if Bitcoin pops back up to 3,600 on the first pass, I'd, I'd, I'd like to be a seller actually. Um, again, in confluence with the gap on CMEs right over here, which actually are just a significantly easier chart to read. Again, a nice symmetrical triangle right over here. You can actually make a measure move based Based off this guy, which would be pointing us down to well, this spike low, which was around 3,400-ish area. So fair enough. That, uh, with that in mind, it would actually suggest that spot exchanges, like we just looked at, um, you know, probably don't probably don't get too far down below 3,400 if it were to like really have some follow through, which we don't have just yet. In fact, even on this nice uh, uh, gap down open, there's not, you know, you don't really see like volume confirmation on this. So is this a full-on breakdown? I would be hesitant to say to to say as of yet, uh, or at least I'd say likely no. Um, so let's go check out Mr. Buterol, because Mr. Buterol has been really the leader in the market, in, in my opinion, over the last, um, oh, oh, well, the last like month, month and a half, two months. And this guy over here, let's just take everything off again. You know, just 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 looking at this guy right over here. Let's put on the ten simple. You know, what do you see? What do you see? Even on that nice run of Saturday, just another rejection of the twenty one exponential moving average right over here, and then back below all major moving averages the day after on Sunday. Again, as, as you know, same thing on this guy. As long as we're as long as we're respecting the the ten simple as resistance, I am bearish on this one, and this one even does have a bearish pattern in it. Although I'm not necessarily a pattern trader, I would I would never consider myself a pattern trader. I don't really care too much about them. Uh, I feel like they're <laughs> Never mind. You you already know where I'm going with that. If you've been tuning this content, you already know. Um you're going to end up like tone base, man, buying every fucking hundred dollars down, which is a little bit of a good counter indicator right now, because I think he is bearish once again, or at least that's what I've been told uh, through the discords. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, you you got you got you do technically have a head and shoulders on this guy. Uh, 21 and 55 rejected from crossing the upside right over here. That typically gives you insight and what the boss and algorithms are thinking. And 117, a little over 117 would be that neckline area. So as long as you're above there, it's hard to get too damn bearish. Now, just like Bitcoin, there is kind of a time component of this where you don't 
want to spend it, the, the the more time that you spend going kind of sideways out of this area the less likely that it actually is to break um, so I do want to see this play out relatively soon so if we are gonna get that blood moon action well I want to see some blood I want to see some blood moon pretty damn soon again four hour dildo chart the uh, the four hour dildo death cross right over here green 55 purple 200 still uh, still very much in play in fact again you, uh, on Saturday all you got was just not you but like all buterol got was just another test of the 200 exponential moving average right over here rejected by the uh in ending below the 55 there you go um again tested one two three four times and down but as you can see over here even with this massive look to the downside there's not like there is not volume confirmation on this and i think this is a little bit easier to be seen let's just put on these guys right over here yeah, yeah you again you, you get that nice orderly drop off in volume uh according to this guy right over here, something like that. Um, you are getting the volume signature of a head and shoulders. Uh, you have that nice, you know, left to right, just sloping downwards. You have the right shape, you have the right size, you have the right smell, you have the right taste, you have the right setup with your movement numbers, at least at least that I'd wanna see. But the most important part, the most, the, the, the only, the, the part that matters most, has not been initiated just yet. 117 needs to be broken on a four hour dildo time frame. Do, did, did we actually have that on the last one? Let me go, let's let's go zoom in and check. Did this get it? Uh, putting this, if we made this on a four hour, yeah, it would not be right on a four hour. Now on an eight hour, funnily enough, an eight hour I believe actually did break it. Let's just make sure this is right. Yep, that looks right to me. And yeah, actually did close just a smidge below. I wanna see volume on it. So there is, it, do, it does not look Good right here it does not look good um i mean you even have hidden bearish divergence t uh, playing out between this point and this point right over here also it is making a higher high uh and we still got a little bit a little bit of room down to this area right over here um where things typically reside after a cross or sorry after a signature like that um and we do have a symmetrical triangle right over here being resolved to the downside with a mesh move all the way to 108 but Look at this, the wick on the dildo that actually took you below this did hit that area and then it was bought right back up on up. So it's not so clear right now, not so clear. Definitely more bearish things and I mean, I, I wouldn't look at this chart and say, wow, that looks really fucking bullish. I would say that chart looks like shit, but is it time to be taking a position on, on, on you know, on, on actual little garbage just yet? Well, geez, I'm gonna piss off so many people. I apologize, I don't. <laughs> Don't listen to me about that kind of stuff. People people get mad when I talk about exchanges now, too. It's like, stop making fun of Binance. Well, <laughs> stop listing fucking scams then. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, anyways, 10-hour uh, right over here. Sorry, getting way off track. People are not interested in talking about this. 10-hour uh, um, stokes are actually crossed up, but lose, uh, I wouldn't say losing momentum just yet, but they are... Yeah, again, this does not look good, uh, but need, needs to break this area, you know, uh, you know, once and for all. Um, otherwise, like I said, it's there is a timing component of, uh, on this, so you don't really want to get one of those barts back ups. But, uh, but, but basically, I will essentially maintain this view as long as we're below one twenty two and a half. As long as Bitcoin, or sorry, as long as Mr. Buterol is below one twenty two and a half, don't really see, you know, don't really see any reason to be not bearish on this guy. Although getting this get uh, get uh getting this final component down around here is the critical thing on this uh let's see what the weekly says i'm curious what the weekly saying on this guy yeah it did print a nice um a nice long legged doji down around here it did end below the 10 simple moon average so this you know this makes it difficult this is a sign of indecision and perhaps even reversal but again as long as you know as long as weekly dildos are closing below the red 10 simple which is 121 and uh in some odd sense you know i'd, I'd be more bearish on this than bullish what are also just saying uh weekly stokes are still crossed up they're still headed up trying to get out of the uh, out of the bearish control zone uh dmi adx Mm, kind of signaling that the trend is strengthening once again but not really i want to see something more i want to see something more um uh weekly rsi not telling you too much still hanging around the bearish control zone and uh weekly jewel over here not telling you too much either it did time me the bottom perfectly right over here but this typically will act as a little bit of resistance on the way up so let's see how that 
let's let's see if we even get there first and foremost but uh but if it does i would imagine that that's probably gonna be a little bit of resistance but that also you know that also entailed you know mr buterell probably probably crawling its way back up around here which would at some you know again above that price point that we looked at i forget exactly what it was was it like 120 yeah, it was like let's let's just see uh, it was like one let's just call it like 125. If you get back above there, that's gonna negate this uh, this head and shoulders reversal pattern. But for now, that is still my read on this guy. But need to see confirmation. Eight hour technically has closed below. Four hour has not, which, you know, it's like, which one do you put more weight on? Typically the higher time frame. But I need to see that volume. I need to see that volume confirmation. Um, again, mesh move on this whole thing, you know, bringing this thing all the way down to literally 69 down around here, I believe it is. Yeah, uh, great number, but you know, perhaps even best, best seen on this, you know, th this is not a good, this is ugly. It's really ugly. Um, but, uh, you know, again, first things first needs to break that area. And also just as important, just, just like Bitcoin, you know, you're going to see everyone get super bearish. If this thing gets back down below 100 or even in that range, uh, I think it's going to be similar to Bitcoin in the sense that I don't want to be bearish on that until I see a major error being broken. Although I do believe strongly that it will be broken, need to see confirmation first. Um, anyways, let's get on over and check out GBDC. We will be not trading this today as it trades OTC on American markets, which will again not be trading today. But it, it does concern me that this one actually is still holding around in its flag support. Now, again, a bearish pattern, typically a bearishly resolved pattern. Um, doesn't mean that's always gets resolved to the downside, but statistically more likely gap all the way up here at about $4.69. Uh, so that is kind of like a magnet for price action, but with CMEs and spot, you know, kind of coming back down to, um, and, and technically breaking some supports. Well, what happens to this guy? Is he gonna is he gonna open up lower? Well, if it if it does open up lower, then that will be a confirmed kill of this uh, of, of this uh, bear flag. Again, we're not gonna have resolution on this until tomorrow, um, when American markets are are back open. But does have a measure move down to about two dollars and sixty cents. I would put bit, uh, spot Bitcoin somewhere in the mid twos. I'd imagine. So yeah, again, be aware of these things. Um, let's go check out XRP over here. XRP, XRP's, XRP and XLM have been like great insights because they have, you know, when, when, when some of the market has been signaling some strength, these guys have been saying, nope, we're not strong. We would like to go back down. <laughs> and, and XRP uh, giving you full, uh, um, uh, giving that to you right over here, just like DMX and two, three day total death cross, still respecting it still, and, you know, we said as long as it's below 35, Five, th sorry, 34 and a half cents. I treat this, uh, I treat this as bearish and more likely to go down. And that's kind of what it feels like we're doing right over here. What is a two day looking like? Yeah. Two days, another rejection of the 10 simple, mm, you know, if this thing, if this thing ends back around 28, you know, a little bit above 28 cents, probably going to bounce around there. But, uh, I do, f I do feel like this one's slumping over now. Ripple is kind of a, kind of a wild card. You know, they, you know, all you need is garlic house to flip the switch and this thing goes fucking flying. But as far as TA goes, does not look too healthy. You're getting that, you know, that, that roly poly action, which is not a good thing. Uh, let's go check out XMR. It's just right here. So why not? Yeah, it looks basically the same as, as, as ripples. As long as you're below 48 or 47 and a half dollars, bad, it's bad. It's bad. Uh, stellar, how stellar look? Um, yep. As long as we're below that, that 10.9 cent region right over here, which was just another rejection on Saturday. Bad. Again, I don't see what other people are seeing in this. And in fact, this actually does remind me to bring up this chart right over here. Let's go look at the inverted Hagen rechart and see how much more we can uh, come up with. And right over here, I mean, if I showed you this chart, you'd, well, I mean, what would you think, right? What would you think? You'd not be too impressed. Now, again, do I see volume confirmation on this? Fuck no, I do not. In fact, just more of the same, really, um, which is concerning and maybe best seen on like a, on a daily right over here yeah you're not you're not getting you're not getting that 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 major bull stuff but this actually does look more than anything i know i have it represented as some sort of a triangular consolidation right here i actually don't really think that that's what's going on because we're just not getting the right volume signatures in, in the right places but what i do feel like we have going on is some sort of a cup and handle which would be an inverted cup and handle on spot charts right now again is the middle is the middle right technically not um but you know just looking at this guy right over here oh man i'm sorry these all these numbers are right in the way i i actually have to have them them up there just so i can see it. it's it is important to me but it, it does get annoying on this um you know looks looks pretty fucking bullish man uh if this thing does break there ain't much stopping it from this former area 3200 uh, just looking at charting formations alone i mean this is <laughs> 
a very bullish chart, <laughs> a very bullish chart. Um, so yeah. Anyways, um, what else do we have to look on this guy? I guess I just wanted to show this. Maybe on the lower time frames we can see some. Yeah, four four hour over, over here looking pretty damn strong. Yeah, four uh, four hour actually does look pretty. Uh, let's let's take everything off and just do this guy right over here. If I show you this, I mean, I think most people could pick this one up and say, all right, as long as we are below or above 35.80, I don't necessarily want to be bullish on this. Closing four hour deal is, you know, below there. Um, so yeah, just another way of looking at it. And uh, yeah, Bitcoin not looking too healthy right here. Um, but hey, still no, still no full on confirmations. And it is there, there is something to be said about when things look a little bit too obvious that typically the opposite happens and patterns are painted, no doubt about that. And a lot of people are getting quite bearish right now. So I am on edge about that. I don't have too much, too much of a position, but I do have, I did uncover my short from, um, what was it for, uh, 6,300, uh, yesterday on the drop below, f uh, what was it? 30, 3,600. So I didn't get all of the move or sorry, 3,650. I didn't get all the move, but I am, um, I am, you know, uh, once again, exposed to the short side exposed, um, XX exposed. Uh, anyways, let's go down and what else do we want to talk about? Yeah, I guess I'll just quickly go over why, um, what we're looking at or sorry let's go over here to the longs and shorts okay so shorts on on finex once again this is relevant to me again i don't want to make it sound like you can have a trend line on this you you can't you can't people who who make that who make it sound like oh we have guys we have bearish divergence on on the shorts chart can't go lower bro guys we have stochastics crossing on the bearish chart you know what that means? We're going fucking higher, baby. Nope, you can't do that. These are two very incomplete pieces of the whole. We can only look at these for absolute values and historical relevancy of these not fucking indicators. Oh my God. <laughs> Just keep on seeing these around crypto Twitter. It's so silly. It's so silly. Um, it's like next next you're going to start doing like Gart leaves and fucking Elliott waves on this bullshit. Good one. Anyways, uh, the reason why I do why this is on my on my radar is because anytime that Bitcoin gets down around this low twenty thousand number, it does match up with major major dumps. So you have this guy right over here. That's your dump of August. That's this is your dump of November. The break of six thousand. Have you heard of it? Have you heard of it? The break of six thousand. Have you heard of it? And then uh, once again, we're in this area. Uh, you know, here what is it basically saying? It's basically saying that the bears have plenty of ammo to go and dry. And historically speaking, this is when they typically do attack when they have enough, you know, resources to throw them red dildos down uh, down some bull bung holes uh, right over here um, you know the these critical points were also major dumps in January and February but of course Bitcoin had a much higher dollar price during those times so naturally the coins you know you're the the coins available is going to be is going to be less or, or you don't need to put on as many coins to you know have the same sort of positional risk or, or positional exposure as you would over here when Bitcoin is literally you know a third fourth or fifth of the of the price that it was you know a year year and a half ago um, okay, uh, longs again. Longs. Th this is concerning because longs. You don't want above thirty thousand longs historically speaking when you're below four thousand. Four thousand is a major resistance, right? And we'll go over why that's so important and just uh, after this. But but basically, it's, there's too many people on the bus, and with too many people think that, thinking that this is a low and, and having the, these positions on. And again, remember they are paying not point one four percent. I mean that's that's massive. Uh, I would really I would really, uh, you know, you got to be asking yourself, okay, if people are holding these positions from somewhere down around here, a lot of people getting long, you know, here and also here. So this is this is December, so price action was probably around around where we are right now. But a lot of the newer ones going going long yesterday, um, you know, if there's any sort of downwards price action, if if 3,500 breaks, they're not only going to be paying, you know, they're they're not only going to be losing on their position, but also paying you know, five to $10,000 a day just to hold that losing position underwater. So scuba diving, you know, for how, you know, if you're going to be scuba diving in front, in front of the week, just hoping that it goes up. I mean, it's, that adds up. It, it really does. So yeah. Um, great place for the bears to attack if they wanted to. They have a lot of people, uh, a lot of people in hot water, um, and could get those cascade, uh, those cascade effects. So did want to mention that anyways. Um, what was I just saying that I was going to mention in just a second? Ah, yes, that's right. Okay. So over here on, um, on our bitstamp chart, let's just quickly talk about this. I don't want to go into to full on detail on this, but, uh, whoops, not that I want to bring up, um, my, yeah, my exponentials and simples over here. And basically, uh, looking at this guy right over here and putting on the weekly, I am bearish. I'm bearish on this chart 
because one, I, I, I've not seen anything that is indicative of a major low being put in volume. Uh, and again, I won't go into too much detail on this, but if you want full on examples, the full on explanation, go check out the video I uploaded yesterday in the long term analysis playlist. That'll go into much more detail than what I'm about to do right now, but I'll just kind of graze over it. Basically, I don't see what I don't see what I want to see in a typical market cycle bottom, which is extremely high volume on the actual low. This this spike over here, by the way, correlates with this deal, though. This over here, very, very low. And again, remember, these are measured in coins traded, not dollars traded. So it's even lower than than what you did over here, like less than half. Um, then on top of that, okay, so also the percentage gain off this area, not too impressive as well. It's very reminiscent of something that you're doing right over here. And also just the time spent at the low is ex is very unlikely as well. You know, markets don't give you multiple days to buy the low. It's not, re remember, when you're talking about major market cycle lows being put in, it's, it, it's 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 made it's basically about one major player not not one major player but someone with extremely deep pockets or a group of them or whatever the fuck decides okay this is the point where i can get the the most at the lowest it because when someone come when someone who has you know a billion dollars you know plus comes into the market and, and they put down their bids they throw down their bids they're going to move the market in an basically an irreversible way in, in a way that's not the right way to say it to be fair, that's not the right way to say it, but what I mean to say is, is that when someone puts down and throws down a shit ton of, of uh, and buys a shit ton of actual coins, it's, it caused a cascade effect because you're going to see, you know, everyone's looking at the same thing and everyone's, everyone's looking for capitulation. So once that person jumps in, you know, it's kind of like they, they've given up their cover, they've given up their camouflage and now everyone knows. So they know that in order to create their most maximum financial uh, opportunity, they need to get as much as possible at the, you know, basically at the lowest price. How do you do that? Well, you basically do it when no one else is looking. So all the silly analysts saying, oh, Bitcoin's definitely going to 11,000. Bitcoin's definitely going to, you know, 1,300 or, or, or 2,000. No, it's so silly to say that. You can't say that. You can't fucking say that. It's very naive to say. Um, but why am I even on this tangent? I don't know. I don't know. But again, four, you know, four days uh, spending at the low right over here, extremely unlikely, extremely unlikely. And then overall, I mean, look at the bounce so far. We bounced up, you know, on average around 20%, right? 20%, obviously, we're, we're much less than that right now. Um, but putting that into context, Bitcoin has a very nice way that it likes to play out its it, it, its capitulation cycles or or its like actual you know big big moves off the low. Well, you have this guy right over here, which which was a great example on the February um, drop, which was about fifty. You know, Bitcoin bounced up fifty percent in the span of like literally just a few days, and bounced up you know about a hundred percent in the span of a couple of weeks right over here, um, from top to, from from bottom to top right over here again. You know, twenty ish uh, percent. That's not too impressive. You know, over here when Bitcoin had like an actual capitulation, this was a 60%, 69% um, rise basically in the span of a few days as well. And again, you know, in the span of a couple weeks, literally 100% wick, wick to wick. You know, same thing over here. And, and if we go into the into the history of it, of course, not every, not not all assets have that sort of signature, but the asset itself does have a personality in the way that it plays out its market cycles. That's why this is relevant. Um, and again, all, you know, all, all trading assets that I've looked at, whether it's, you know, know, magic net money, Forex commodities, or, you know, or, or equities, which is where I come from as a market maker, do have this sort of similar, you know, playoff in how they play out their, their, their market cycles. And then each individual one, you know, has their own little personality within that. But remember, it's, it all comes down to human psychology and how those things get played out. Um, so that's why those signatures are, are relevant and, uh, and, and you see them across all sorts of different trading classes. Anyways, uh, what we have over here is a failure to communicate. Is to is a failure to communicate. But to me, this area right over here is very similar to this area right over here. Look at the volume of this area in relation to this area right over here. Look at the volume of this area of this area in relation to this area right over here. Just as an aside, when we actually, if and when we actually do get the more violent wave of capitulation, which doesn't actually need to happen, you can get the more brutal wave of capitulation as well, which is just sideways for the next five years, as long as you just, as long as you cause. It, it, the the emotion of desperation and despair uh then it will actually call it then then then, the, ugh, then that can cause capitulation as well but basically this volume over here is what i want to see on on like an actual violent capitulation if we get that way just like you saw over here in relation to this guy right over here anyways to me this and this are similar to this and this not only did bitcoin kind of come down from a similar area you know you come down off that off off this descending triangle right over here about 54 percent and then look how much did we 
bounce up from there, you know, about, sorry, oops, I need to go uh, body to body doing this wrong. Yeah, about 21%. Well, what do we have over here? Descending triangle leading down into your into your, into your downtrend, 52.5%. Holy moly, that looks very similar. And then as we looked at before, bounced up like what? Like 20, 20, 20 some odd percent. Again, very, 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 very similar. And if we do incite and invoke the ancient knowledge, not the ancient knowledge, but, but the knowledge of the MVT signal, well, you look at this guy right over here, and again, this is not work on a weekly because of the way that it's actually like programmed itself. It's like people are people keep on looking at the weekly on it and they're like, Cron, it's it's green. It's green. It's bottomed. It's like, oh, my God. No, <laughs> read the fucking instructions. <laughs> read the fucking instructions. Sorry. Um, but as you can see on the MVT signal over here, this thing calls tops and bottoms pretty damn well. Doesn't mean it has to be the overall top or overall bottom, but it does call. But if, if you're not if you're not putting in a major read on this, it's definitely not a major top or major bottom. Uh, as far as history goes, and this has been endorsed by the maker Willy Wu, who, who um, you know, is aware that liquid and uh, and and lightning have changed this. So, so this is endorsed and has been verified by, by him as as worthwhile. Anyways, you called your top over here, called your bottom over here. By the way, remember this green over here. Remember how we said that that was an example of capitulation? Yes, there you go. Um, uh, some reds over here on the bull traps, um, you know, at the 6,000 level. And are we in the green just yet? In fact, no, we are down around the 90 level in the oscillator. Now, let's go back, let's scroll back to the area that we were looking at in 2014, uh, right over here. Do we have something similar going on? Well, you called the top over here. I mean, you, you basically called the top right there, called the bottom right there, called the top right there. And then is there a bottom right over here? No, you do, you do have a green spike right over here. Um, but let's just go into this area and where are we right over here? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is this the 90 level? Is that the 90 level? Oh, fuck. I thought this was the bottom. Again, um, not, you know, not the end all be all on its own, but it does hold weight on its own. No doubt about that. So I do put weight on that and I do pay attention to that as it is an external factor kind of confirming what we're looking at with price, volume, and time. Again, everything that I look at from price, volume, and time tells me that it's, you know, it's, it's unlikely to be bottom. Again, go to the long-term analysis playlist if you want the full on look on that. Um, and, uh, and, and then even something like that, you know, an external factor that is basically just related to the network value divided by the, the daily transaction value, daily transaction value, weekly users, uh, daily transaction values. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm found, I'm probably sounding way arrogant. I apologize. Um, it's not my intention. Um, but my point is, is that it's an external factor that agrees with what the price volume and time indicators are saying as well. So that's interesting to me. Also, again, I don't want to go too deep into this, but the historical volatility rank, um, always want to bring this up because it is historical. <laughs> Spelling, not too good at it. <laughs> my spelling has been so atrocious recently, by the way. I apologize if you have dealt with my the eyesore of my spelling on Discord recently. I don't know why I just can't type anymore, but it's it disgusts me too. It disgusts me too. I'm just like, how does this even get out like this? Why are there all the, where, why are all these errors here? Are you a moron? Yes, um, <laughs> me, not you. Uh, but uh, but over here on the historical volatility rank, are we putting in lows on this guy either? Well, hidden up all the way to the six nine area. That's not necessarily where things typically bottom out. Or you know, again, anytime that this thing gets around like a point nine or higher, it you know it oscillates between zero and one. It tells you about major inflection points on the market. So this was your bottom. This was your top. This was a ma massive bottom right here. This was a massive bottom right here. And you got got your top right over here. Got your top right over here. Got your top right over here got your bottom right over here, so on and so forth, you get it. Uh, I don't need to bore you anymore with that. But basically, the if you're not familiar with volatility, <sighs> I don't want to go over the dictionary definition of it because it's not too helpful. But but basically, you know, higher volatility essentially equates with, you know, more potential financial opportunity. Um, so on major inflection points of the market, well, technically speaking, you could have phenomenal, phenomenal gains, theoretically speaking. And this thing does have a good history of actually, you know, working. So again, something that can only be used on the, or, or something to only be used on the daily when it comes to Bitcoin land, uh, not the weekly, it's going to give you a false read. Um, so again, you know, do I think that the low is in unlikely? Where do I think this thing is likely to go if the low is in fact not in? Well, Again, I, I won't go in, in, into too much detail here, and I do have a few areas of interest to the downside. Again, this is making the a major assumption here, major assumption to be made. Hey, 
I'm making a major assumption that 3250 breaks. I think that it does happen, my opinion, but I don't trade my opinion. My opinion's worthless. Um, if that area does break, then I start looking down towards this 2300 or 2600 area right over here. Does have some nice high volume uh, nodes coming in right around there. The 886 Bonacci retracement is in this area as well, which by the way is where you did bottom out in 2014, right over here. Some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around some of this area. And as we said, the volume profile. And if we go over here to the BLX index, you'll see that the 377 blue exponential is coming in right around that 2600 area. And and if we go back to and bring this full circle where uh, where where we look at this guy right over here as potential descending triangle, well, we can make a mesh move on this, right? And if we can make a mesh move on it, where would it be pointing down towards? I'm not even going to get this properly, but just, <laughs> just bear with me <laughs> for a second. No pun intended. Uh, it'd be pointing all the way down around here to about 2300-ish area. So yeah, that is kind of the next area that I do look towards. Um, if 3250 breaks, of course, that's not guaranteed to actually be the bottoming area. There, There's no guarantee. You have to actually see the reaction after that you know if and when it actually does happen otherwise you're going to be caught up in the silly in the silly sound bits that all of these people are saying like bitcoin's definitely not going to go here bitcoin's definitely going here it, they're equally naive for someone to say that that bitcoin definitely isn't going to 1850 because my horizontal my my line right here the support from historical sense wasn't that big it's like it doesn't no that's not how it works that's not that's quite literally not how it works you have a severe lack of understanding. Um, so yeah, that's gonna do it for today's uh, video. Um, I hope this one finds you well, and uh, let's just wrap up the the lower time frames brief, uh, really, really quickly right over here. Uh oh, Bitcoin rallying right now. Bitcoin going to the moon, baby. Um, but uh, but basically, Bitcoin, you know, uh, 30, 35, 40 ish resistance right over here. If you know, as long as you're below there, not really too much to look at. But uh, even if it does, even if it does pop all the way back up to about four thousand ish area, I, I'm still, you know, I'd still be looking to sell that. It's not until Bitcoin, sorry, four thousand, no, thirty six hundred. I apologize. The gap on the CMEs right over here. Uh, I would sell that on the first pass if it did get back above there. Now, if it does close above that area, if it closes above thirty six hundred on spot exchanges and on CMEs, then yes, then I think at that point, something weird would be going on. Uh, again, look for Mr. Buterol to be the confirming factor. Um, below 117, probably going to hold more weight. But for now, that's probably going to do it. Um, to the downside, of course, you know, on, on Mr. Bitcoin, need to see, really need to see 3,500 broke on like a two hour deal to uh, close. Um, so, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hope this one finds you well. We'll be back on later with some live stream action. Look forward to seeing you there. If not, well, I wish you well, anyways. And uh, take care. Enjoy your Monday.